$65 strike on okay. Amgen. All right. Uh, if you buy the call over here on the the left is the call. So if you buy the call, uh, it's bidding at uh, 525 by 545. You might get filled right in the middle. Let's just say you buy the call at 535. Get a good deal on it. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, how much do you have at risk if you buy one call? Well, you've got five hundred and thirty-five dollars. Your full investment. That call could expire worthless, and you could lose all the premium. Right. Okay. So let's go on over here to the right. And it's going to take a little bit more because if we buy the stock at 5540 uh, and also buy a put option at, uh, say, um, the same, the $65 strike at uh, $14.65, okay? Um, Look over here, Mike. How much of that investment would be at risk? Would it be the whole amount, or would it be just the time value of that particular investment? Well, it's just the time value, because the intrinsic value is covered by the purchase of that put option. You've essentially bought an insurance policy that's higher than the current stock price. Now, yes, you paid a little bit extra for that, but all you're risking is the time value, the $4.98 there, not the full $15. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. 1440-ish. That's right. Uh, so here's how it breaks down. Okay, the long call itself would risk five dollars and uh, forty-five cents, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, if if you had that position, all right. If you buy the sixty-five dollar call. Now, if we buy the stock and the sixty-five dollar put option, why then uh, the total amount at risk is going to be less? Okay, look at that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Now, I use the ask prices on both of these. All right, I use the ask price on the on the call, and I use the ask price on the put, and that's exactly what we can expect to be filled with. You probably could do better buying the call, but you know what? You could also probably do better buying the put, couldn't you? If, if you could get it at ten cents under the ask, then mm -hmm. this would be an even better number. But the point is, Mike, are are these different numbers? Yes, they are. Yeah, there's a different amount at risk. Now, hmm, I've, I've had some folks say to me, well, wait a minute, that can't be right because if you could uh, do that, okay, then you could buy one and short the other and have an arbitrage trade, and, uh, and that can't be. And, uh, Mike, the fact is that you can do that. <laughs> you can buy the married put and then short the call and have an arbitrage trade. But the thing is, the difference here is uh, uh, 50 cents. Okay, the difference here is, is exactly 50 cents. And uh, 50 cents for an investment of 69.95 and holding it for a couple of years, you know what that equates out to? What it would equates that? Out to the, it equates out to the risk-free interest rate. Okay. Yeah, you see, you see, my critics have have said, well, geez, you know, uh, there's no difference. Well, yeah, there is a difference, and and they've also said, well, geez, you know, uh, if 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 what you're saying is true, if there's a mathematical edge to buying a married put, why then you could buy a married put and then sell a call, and uh, make money for free. And the fact is, yeah, you can make money for free. You mm -hmm. just can't make a lot. <laughs> You're not going to make a whole lot, okay? But but it is there, okay? Can can a, a long call and a merry put be used similarly? Yes, but it's very important to understand and even more important to practice position sizing. Now, uh, Mike, I'm showing a uh, chart here uh, of an unfortunate uh, soul. Do you remember this uh, illustration that we used to do? I do. It's been a year since I've seen this. <laughs> I haven't been sharing this for for a while, but uh, I I actually had somebody that went to a uh, uh, oh uh, gosh should we use a name I won't use the name nah. okay but uh, there was a fellow out there that was that was saying that it's uh, a wealth option to buy calls and then sell calls against and so what he did was he recommended uh, Boston Scientific BSX and uh, what uh, what this fellow did that 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 called me. He got into the twelve dollar the it was a January oh nine twelve dollar and fifty cent call option. Now at the time Boston Scientific was trading at eighteen dollars. So my that was a deep in the money call, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Right, and what he did was he picked up 35 contracts. Well, uh, over the next couple of years, he's fighting two things. Number one, he's fighting the time decay on the option. But what else is he fighting? 
Well, he's fighting a declining stock price, isn't he? Right. At the at the point where he called me, he called me while uh, BSX was basing in here, and he says, what should I do? <laughs> and I said, well, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of wisdom because I would never be in a position like this. I would never have bought 35 long calls. What, yeah. what, uh, what gave you the idea to do that? And he said, well, you know, I mean, that's what they teach. You, you buy these long calls, and you sell calls against, and... And you make money. I said, well, you know, where are you at so far? He says, I'm down 87%. I said, right. okay. At that point, I would sell. He said, well, I don't know. It might come back. And then, of course, you know the rest of the story. Okay. It, it just got worse and worse. And mm -hmm. He ended up losing most of his investment. Okay. Well, <laughs> if you're going to trade long calls, you need to use only a small percent of your account. You know, the, the, the Black-Scholes equation assumes that if you buy a call, Mike, what does it assume? Well, it assumes that you're only going to put a certain amount in place for the call position, and then you're going to put a sort of, what I use the term commensurate, that's not always the best term, but I'm putting another amount aside to hold on deposit to sort of mimic buying the stock itself. The money that I would use to that's buy right. the stock, I've put aside in an account. That's right. You see, the thing is, uh, the black Scholes equation assumes that you have the capital to buy the stock, mm -hmm. but instead of buying the stock, you buy the call and put the rest, what did I say? The, the rest, rest. Mm -hmm. into an interest-bearing instrument. And, 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 and not everybody is teaching that. Not, not everybody is saying, look, you should only trade as many long calls uh, as you could afford if you were buying the stock. All right, mm -hmm. and then the rest should go into an interest-bearing instrument. Okay, well, uh, the uh, the thing is that when you buy a married put, okay, that is priced in. It's priced in. Okay, when we uh, do a, a true synthetic equivalent, okay, the the true synthetic equivalent of the long call is not the married put. The mm -hmm. true synthetic equivalent is the long call plus as much cash as it would take to buy the stock anyway, put away and bury interest. Mm -hmm. But not everybody does that, do they? Not no. everybody does that. Okay, let me go ahead and, and uh, ask a poll here, okay? Over the last 12 months, now we had, uh, was it 80% doing uh, long calls and puts? 79, so yeah, well, let's just round up, say 80%. Seventy-nine percent doing long calls. So over the last twelve months, are you happy with your trading results? And this is going to include folks other than the long call traders, mm -hmm. okay? But um, let's just see what uh, uh, you know. What our level of satisfaction has been trading that way, Mike. This is shaping up pretty much the way we normally see, isn't it? Okay, that's 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 interesting. Yeah, eighty percent. Well, from seventy-nine percent of our attendees today trade long calls and puts. Okay. Now let's go ahead and close this. It's been up about another. Well, let me leave it for another ten seconds or so. Okay, we'll go ahead and close it, <laughs> and then share the results. Okay, Mike, what do you see? Well, I see what we Is normally. That yeah, that that is up there, Kurt. We have our twenty four percent mixed emotions. Our uh, <coughs> excuse me, Kurt. I apologize. Our sixty percent saying no, and sixteen percent saying yes. They were happy with their results. Right, sixteen percent are happy with their results, and that's with most of us trading long calls. Well, geez, you know, I, I'm going to venture to say that maybe one of the reasons that we're not happy mm -hmm. is that we're losing money. Do you think that'd be a safe bet? Yeah, I think that'd be a pretty good bet, Kurt. Absolutely. Okay, and uh, maybe <clears throat> if we were able to control some of those losses, or or make those losses when we do have a loss, make them really small, then that would be uh, a, a good way to go. Perhaps if we traded less contracts, or we traded only as many contracts, and perhaps if we had an edge when we buy. Now, let me go ahead and hide those results here, Mike. The true synthetic equivalent of a married put is not a long call, is it? The no. true synthetic equivalent of a, of a married put 